Once again, it's an absolutely wild day in the world of Magic the Gathering. Players are amped up to the point where they are literally destroying 30th anniversary cards. On top of that, Wizards of the Coast is talking about some changes to secret layers. And on top of that as well, we have the most shamefully short spoiler season in Magic the Gathering's history. Magic. I am a wizard! History. I'm an old wizard! The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, my friends. I hope the day finds you well because we have gathered for another glorious installment of Mega Magic News. We have multiple items to talk about today and surprise, surprise, 30th anniversary just happens to be one of them, and Magic players happen to be upset about it. Oh, that's new? Oh wait, that's how it always is, because that makes perfect sense. So, what's going on now? You may have seen a video making the rounds, where someone has straight up been destroying 30th, and I'm not talking about the little countdown kids, I'm talking about the straight up proxy packs that Wizards just put on sale that we've all been going crazy about. Boom, they're all just getting shredded online and people are raving and going crazy for it. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I know Bad Boy Gaming is over there with his little hatchet, watcha, watcha, chopping up booster packs. And speaking of which, on his most recent video, he stole my intro. So I am going to sue him so hard, Narnges. He's going to get skadarshed by me. But normally that kind of destruction is done for some zaniness. Well, look at me. I hatcheted a Snapcaster Mage in half or whatever it is, right? It's done for the, oh, it's gambly. What's going to get destroyed? But it's not just like angry. Let's watch the product get destroyed. Burn the witch. Burn the witch. I've never, ever seen Burn the Witch in Magic the Gathering. But that's straight up what's going on with 30th Anniversary, where basically whenever you see a situation with cards getting destroyed, there will be people who come in and go, I can't bear to see this. Even if they're just little comments that don't really matter, people do not enjoy seeing Magic cards get destroyed. I mean, a subset does, but there's a bunch who are straight up like, no, I don't want to see it. But you won't find people decrying the destruction of these cards. Everybody is pretty much universally on the same page. It's eerie and wild. You have a bunch of Magic players who are literally taking an exodus out of the game. You have a bunch who are staying to watch it burn. Like there's a bunch of people who are sticking around not to give Wizards money, but to watch the game burn. And it really does make you wonder if at a certain point, like Wizards of the Coast is probably thinking to themselves, look, they keep buying this. We can just keep doing this endlessly rinse and repeat and then once we get to the point where it's too much we'll just like pull it back like we did with the master sets right because they did do that the what was it iconic masters and masters 25 were basically where the master sets went off of a cliff and wizards at the last minute created ultimate masters with what they had kicking around on the shelf as like a send-off and said all right, we're done with this product. We milked it into the ground. Now it did get revised with the whole sort of double masters concept, but ultimately Wizards of the Coast ends up shelving these things and then going, hey, we're gonna kind of creep back. And so you can see that the master sets were shelved originally, but the idea of the master sets, the increased prices, that kind of stuck around. And we saw that make its way into modern horizons and things of that nature, where they were able to pull it back with a product, but take what they wanted and move forwards. But this is a completely different situation. How is Wizards of the Coast actually supposed to reestablish trust? They can't just go, well, um, you know what, we're not just, we're just not going to make any more of these. It doesn't work that way. Even if Wizards said, hey, we won't make any of these collector's editions. It's like you said, you weren't going to mess around with the reserve list. And then you straight up did an end run around it. So the level of trust that has been eroded in the community is absolutely staggering. This is going to leave a massive scar on the game's growth as a bunch of people leave to the point where it's sprawled out to other card games. That's what a bunch of other card games are talking about. And it's magic's reaching the point of, do you remember Fallout 76, where that game was so abysmal that people 
people who didn't even really play the game, people who really weren't even into video games, were coming by straight up for the car crash rubbernecking. That's what's going on with Magic the Gathering. There are a ton of people who are just coming by to go, okay, what's going on with the bonfire today? People are getting crazier and crazier to the point where 100,000 people or more are happy to watch 30th anniversary get obliterated. How do you take the goodwill of people who are willing to spend crazy amounts of money? You have to understand that six months ago, we were raging out about double master's prices. Why is this product so expensive? What did you do with Baldur's Gate? Like, I remember being upset about Baldur's Gate, the fact that they renamed Baldur's Gate into a Commander Legend set, jacked up the price, and then took the reprints that should have been there and put them in double masters. Like, that was genuinely infuriating. And I was certain, I was positive, that Double Masters 2022 would be the biggest, craziest thing that happened in the year. It was going to squat over everything and affect sales. But boy, was I wrong because double masters only affected sales in the way that people wanted their money to spend on double masters 2022 so all the sets around it suffered as people said yo i'm holding my bank back to buy this set specifically but 30th anniversary turned it into a completely different game where people like yo no i'm i'm peacing out bro i'm done i'm leaving the game and a bunch of other people like yo i still love magic but um i don't love paying for it so how about i just sell off all the cards that i own and then I buy myself a printer and I start printing proxies. And Wizards of the Coast clearly looks like they're scrambling, don't they? Where all of a sudden they make this product, people freak out, they leave the game. There is a massive, huge conversation around proxy. Everybody's calling it proxies. And it seems like Wizards has basically come out and said, well, you may as well use proxies. A lot of people got that message. So Wizards is running around now shutting down proxy maker websites, right? Hey, let's get you shut down. Let's get you shut down to make it more difficult for people to make their own cards. Now, on one hand, obviously, they need to protect their IP. But on the other hand, this is just like a maneuver to keep you boxed in and buying these expensive products. So they have done a massive amount of damage to the brand to the point where it's spilling out in every conceivable direction. And I don't genuinely know how you fix this, right? Because we're not walking into a situation where Wizards feels bad about this. We probably haven't even seen the end of the sales of these products. It's going to happen in batches. People are talking about how excess stuff is being sent off to stores. But as far as I understand, the only thing that's being sent off to stores is what Wizards made as the original peace offering. So when, when they announced this product, they said they were going to send out one box to every LGS and three to every premium location. What a prize! Put that up on your shelf and watch people rage and get angry at you or have somebody like have to quietly come up to the counter and, and like legit, like put it, put it in a bag, in a paper bag, like this is a magazine that I don't want my mom to see that I'm going to hide under my mattress, son. Like that level of shameful purchase where it's like, hey, um, can I, you know what I mean? The most people who want the product aren't even comfortable talking about wanting the product. I've never seen that before. Players are so rabid, they're comfortable attacking each other, declaring that we need to boycott Wizards for multiple years. It's the most insane situation that I've ever seen. So it's wild to be a part of it. And I don't know where we're going from here. So let's talk about the next item on the news agenda, which is secret layers, specifically secret layer bonus cards. Now, Mark Rosewater put out a question, and sometimes the stuff that he puts out doesn't really lead to anything, but a lot of times you'll find that it's kind of a hint as to what's coming. He'll be like, hey, would you like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? And that's because he knows in the kitchen, it's like, that's what they got on the menu for three months from now. So hope that's what you like, son. You know, sometimes he's testing the waters. So what was asked was, do you want your secret layer bonus cards to be revealed in advance? In other words, do you want to know everything about the product that you're buying? And the answer to this, from my perspective, is a resounding yes. That is what you need to do. The secret layer bonus card 
was a really, really cool concept for the initial wave. If you weren't around for the first wave of secret layers, we literally didn't know there was gonna be a bonus card. So you would get whatever secret layer it was, and then inside the secret layer, there would be a stained glass planeswalker. Admittedly for me, I'm a huge fan of stained glass. So those hit really hard for me, but it was this big buzz where it's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Each secret layer has this bonus card and it could be from these different range of planeswalkers. And so it was like a hit concept at first, but then wizards mucked about with it in a number of different ways. One was by changing the bonus cards into basic lands, which feels awful. They thought people were gonna be excited about jumpstart basic lands and they put those in, but they're dreadful. So people were miserable when they got those. That doesn't feel like a reward. You look at the heads and tails decks that people waited for an entire year to get. An entire year to get. And you find out there's two separate bonus cards. You can only get one or the other, a mountain or an island. And if you wanted to know that in advance, well, I guess you need a time machine to go back an entire year. Like, it's absolutely crazy that they don't tell you this stuff. Especially when some of the bonus cards didn't even feel like bonus cards. The Walking Dead secret layer had a bunch of Walking Dead cards, and then the bonus card was Lucille. And I remember saying at this point, they're not even adding bonus cards. It's like they're taking a loaf of bread, taking out some slices of the bread, selling the loaf of bread and going, bonus bread. And it's like, that's a Walking Dead card. You literally just made a bunch of Walking Dead cards and picked one and said, you just don't get to know about it. And it counts as a bonus. So they've been all over the place where they ruined the concept of the bonus. Surprise. They, every good idea they come up with, they immediately run it into the ground, right? So that's what happens with the secret layer bonus cards to the point where they're meaningless. What are they going to do? Shove slivers in there, a basic land or anything like that? So yeah, Going forwards, we should be told what the bonus cards are. And did you see the slick little maneuver they did with the bonus card for the new secret layer batch where they're like, yo, if you buy $200 worth or more of secret layers, you get this bonus card. But if you just try to buy five, because of the price and they all end in 99, it's like, oh, you're five cents short of the bonus. You have to buy an entire secret layer to get that extra five cent threshold. They're working all the angles and honestly they need to ease up because this 30th anniversary stuff has made things wild and we've got a year a year and a half of craziness buckle up it's just going to go further down the road from here in terms of insanity regardless on this specific point i believe that the bonus cards should always be revealed you should know what you're getting and none of this 30 percent chance of foil like with the countdown kit let people buy foil ones let people buy regular ones because people have preferences wizards of the coast doesn't do a good job of making the foils actually premium, they curl to the point where, no word of a lie, I'm doing a series of opening videos over on my Hatcher YouTube channel right now. We're doing one every day all month, opening magic, having a great time, enjoying ourselves. Some of the stuff that's being opened are secret layers. And when I open those, they're foil. And so the cards are curved. And there's so many comments about Pringles, like, so many to the point where I have multiple thoughts going, yo, Pringles should be paying for all the advertising that Wizards is doing for them. And then actually I went, wait a minute, you know what? Pringles should be trying to sue Wizards for this association between them because Pringles delivers the exact same product every single time without fail. You buy a tube of Pringles, you open it, all the Pringles are what they're supposed to be, unless there's like a cracked chip or whatever because somebody's going crazy with it. But you know what I mean? Like Pringles just making these gross little things that they call potato chips, these mashed flakes. There's something weird about Pringles, man. I don't like them. I don't like my cards Pringling and I don't like the Pringle chips. But regardless, they make a more solid product than Wizards. And I thought to myself legitimately, it's unfair to group the two together because Pringles has better quality assurance. Now, let's talk about the most shamefully short spoiler season in Magic the Gathering's history. Dominaria Remastered. They did the weekly magic stream today where they revealed the spoilers, okay? So, they also told us, here's the deal, boys. It's spoiler day, and tomorrow, the entire set goes up. And it's like, say what now? Yeah, tomorrow we put out the entire gallery. And it's like, you care to tell me why? Yeah, because we're starting the new Phyrexia spoilers in like seven days. So we got like a week. We got a week until new Phyrexia. Do you know they're staggering this stuff? It's absolutely wild. The, the Dominaria remastered, that's coming out January 13th. And then Phyrexia all, 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 all will be one is February 3rd. I'm getting tongue-tied thinking about the insanity, trying to wrap my mind around what they're doing. Just this endless 
push this meat grinder of products. So the spoiler season is only one day. So we're gonna take a moment to appreciate some cards that really need appreciation. I'm gonna get up on the screen right now. Legacy weapon, this blew my mind. This is part of the reason it's so shameful that we don't get a proper spoiler season. This is the ultimate moment for Urza where he finally gets revenge on, on Yogmoth for the death of his brother Mishra. Basically, Urza had been trying to make this happen for thousands and thousands of years. He created the Weatherlight. He guided a whole bunch of different bloodlines together to create the best heroes the multiverse had ever seen. He created Karn, the Silver Golem, to go back in time. Assembled all these powerful, powerful tools together to make the legacy weapon. This story starts all the way back with the Brothers War, where Urza is 10 years old and goes all the way thousands of years in the future, where he's basically fighting against an evil dark god. And he sacrifices himself to triumph. I love this so much. Legacy weapon may not be the biggest money card, but in terms of flavor, in terms of goodness, it is epic. Seven mana gets you a legendary artifact. Pay one mana of every color, exile target permanent. So in formats like my cube, where you have access to every color, this is busted. Just five mana permanent's gone, son. And it says, if it'd be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal legacy weapon, shuffle it into its owner's library instead. And if I'm not mistaken, this was the first time that we got this clause. This card is on the power level of Eldrazi in terms of needing to be reshuffled back in. Let's be very clear too though, from a straight up power perspective, seven mana to put it out and then one of every color just to have exiled one permanent is very slow and not the strongest. But when you take the flavor level of the card where you straight up see the legacy weapon blasting into Yogmoth's center, look at that artwork. You've got Urza's head with the gemstone eyes. You've got all these different different pieces of the legacy. You've got the gemstones, you've got the different individuals all together in this rainbow of color that's being, bam, blasted down and thrust forth into Yogmoth, just obliterating him. And he's this black void swallowing up the light and the flavor text, oh, the flavor text in a single blinding flash, Yogmoth was obliterated and Urza could finally rest. I clapped like a circus seal when I saw this. I could not believe it. This is mega epic. And there's multiple variants too, right? You have that version of the artwork, but look at the other version too, where you have the legacy weapon all gearing up with this crazy power blast. You can see the magical energy coruscating along it. But if you look down in the background, look at the sphere behind it, look at the planet behind it, the plane, you can see a giant screaming face, a giant demon face, the face of Yogmoth again. Tell me that's not incredibly epic. The flavor text says, whether lives or precious artifacts, no price was too high to stop the Phyrexian invasion. What a crazy story, man. Urza gets his head cut off by Gerard. Gerard basically gets tricked by Yagma, thinking he'll get Hannah back. It's just, oh, there's just so many layers to this story. It's my favorite storyline in all of Magic's history. And friends, this isn't the only piece that we get to see. Take a look at this. This is Urza's incubator. This is a powerhouse card that people are going to be super excited about and I'm genuinely surprised they did not upgrade it to mythic rare because this card is bonkers. Three casting cost artifact. When it enters the battlefield you choose a creature type. Creature spells of the chosen type cost two less to cast. This is amazing if you like to play tribal level decks, right? And the flavor behind it, if you guys don't know what's going on with these cards right here, with Urza's Incubator, this is him creating the Metathran. This is one of the craziest moments in Urza's history. Because you have to understand, 
Urza is a history from the older days of magic where, where basically heroes were allowed to have depth and they could have good in them and evil in them. Well, maybe not specifically evil, but things that led to evil. Because Urza doesn't have evil specifically in him, but some of the stuff he does underneath is pretty heinous, right? And creating the Metathran the way he did is totally messed up. In fact, I did an entire lore video on that. I'm going to link it here at the end of the video for you to check out because the lore behind it is crazy. Urza's choices are insane and epic on a grand scale. And I love seeing him here. This is an even better artwork than the original Incubator. And I love the flavor text. There's two different ones referencing their need for troops and another one referencing how Urza cares more for constructs than his own son. And that can speak to the fact that Urza is not comfortable around people or the fact that maybe Harbin isn't exactly his son because if you didn't know that go check out the original Brothers War story. I'll link that on the screen too if you want to get into the lore behind this because it's absolutely epic and to me that's why it's super shameful that this spoiler season was super short. And that wraps up the news my friends. Big thank you to all of my patrons for supporting my channel. Head on over check out those links and I will see you my friends for the next one.